Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make some 1 2 dipromo 1 phenyl ethane by brominating styrene. The preparation requires 57.2 ml of styrene, 25.6 ml of bromine, and about 100 ml of dichloromethane. Besides that, some sort of solvent for our recrystallization will be needed. Because this preparation is dangerous, we are going to put on this gas mask plus some nitrile gloves for our own well being. At first, a pre weighed amount of bromine was added to the addition funnel. While the bromine was being added, a lot of nasty fumes were released. To make this reaction more efficient and also a little tamer, DCM was added to the bromine. Dichloromethane is a good inert solvent for brominations and you could also use trichloromethane or even tetrachloromethane. Fortunately, the styrene we have prepared yesterday hasn't polymerized yet. Therefore, we measured out about 57.2 milliliters. While being careful to keep the ground glass joint somewhat clean, the styrene was added followed by about 50 milliliters of dichloromethane. To make the cleanup a little easier, we ended up rinsing the measuring cylinder with the dichloromethane. The apparatus was put together and now we were able to begin. To ensure that everything will stay cold, an ice bath was set up. The magnetic zero was turned on and afterwards we began with the addition of bromine. You can see that upon the addition, the color of the bromine immediately disappears again. This is because an addition reaction between the bromine and the double bond is taking place. No nasty byproduct is found, but only our 1, 2, dibromo, 1 phenyl ethane. This isn't styrene, but just imagine a phenyl group on one of these bonds. As the bromine molecule approaches the double bond, the bromine closer to the double bond takes on a partial positive charge. The atom has become electrophilic. A sigma bond with both of the carbon atoms involved is formed. The bromide ion gets a positive charge and is called a bromonium ion. The second bromine atom was given the electron of the first bromine. It is attracted to the slightly positive charge, but a nucleophilic attack can take place from the same side because we already have this other bromine there. It attacks from the other side, one of the bromine carbon bonds is broken open and each carbon is left with one bromine. The reaction is exothermic and because the ice bath was pretty small, we occasionally added fresh ice. It was mesmerizing to just watch a bromine disappear. At first it's deeply red and afterwards it just disappears as it has never even been there. You can have a closer look at the side without any stirring. At first the bromine drop goes in there, it's still a little red and afterwards it just becomes clear. We encountered a few more mishaps, spilled a lot of water switched out the ice bath and the solution still stayed clear. As the end of the reaction was reached and most of the styrene has already been used up, the bromine stayed in solution for a little longer and created this nice bromine tornado. At some point all the bromine had been added, we switched off the addition funnel and we set up a simple distillation to recover the dichloromethane. It would also be possible to just boil off the dichloromethane in an open beaker, but I wanted to recover it because you don't have to waste reagents especially ones that are so easy to recycle. Dichloromethane starts to boil at around 40 degrees C and therefore it starts to boil very fast. After about half an hour, no more dichloromethane was coming over and the hot plate and stirring were turned off. If there's no solvent left, why isn't there any solid yet? It turns out that the product itself has a melting point of about 72 degrees Celsius, which means that it's liquid at the temperature of the water bath that we used. It took some time and it didn't want to solidify at first, but I shook it a little bit and it crystallized. We waited for 24 hours and the next day we were left with this nice and white solid. It looked decently pure, but I still wanted to do a recrystallization. So we scraped it out into a beaker, it turned out to be about 143 grams and afterwards we added about 500 grams of isopropanol. Over the course of the entire dissolving process, we also added about 210 milliliters of distilled water. Once it was dissolved, the beaker was taken off the hot plate and I waited for it to crystallize. It didn't want to crystallize out at room temperature, so I put it into the freezer and the next day it looked like this. I was a little worried that we wouldn't be able to filter it, but in the end the gravity filtration seemed to work just fine. All crystals were scraped into the filter and the isopropanol water mixture just poured right out. Hitting it with a spoon helped enormously to get more of the solvent out. Have a look at the still wet product. It's fluffy, white and it looks clean. The solution on the other hand still contains some of our product because I wasn't able to add more water beforehand because of the beaker size. 
Upon the addition of water, a lot of it crashes out. We decided to add more water, about 300 milliliters, to crash out most of the stuff and it will not be combined with the pure stuff from the recrystallization. We're just going to label this as impure 1 to dibromo 1 phenyl ethane. The pure stuff on the other hand was scraped out into a drying dish and put into the sun until it had completely dried. The high content of isopropanol in the liquid left in there should make drying a lot faster than if it were just water. While in the sun the product was drying quickly. While drying we mixed it up occasionally with a spatula to expose fresh surface. To speed up the drying process a little we put it into the sun a little more directly and put a fan next to it. After one hour of waiting the powder was bone dry. There's only one thing left to do, which is to transfer it to a container and to weigh it, to determine the yield. We ended up with 116.3 grams, which corresponds to a yield of about 88.1% and if we take 11.3 grams of the crude product into consideration, we ended up with a yield of 96.7%. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like and if you don't want to miss out on future projects like this, make sure to subscribe. I wish you a great day, see you soon.